2001, Iowa has four number one guys, and it's in Iowa City. We have six guys in the semifinals. We put these six in, we're gonna win this tournament. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's just like dominoes. Boom, 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 boom. And it gets to the heavyweight match, and it gets to overtime. Okay, they flip the coin, and the coin is going around and around like this, and it's heads, and it's gonna fall down, and Loney's the shot, and they go, Whoa. and it goes red. Okay, the Illinois guy gets the choice, he gets away, boom, it's up. Lost all six again. I mean, it's right back to the Iowa fans are chanting, zero and six, zero and six, you know, rubbing it in, and all right, Lord, it's happening again. All right, I get it, we're not gonna win, but, we go back and we have a team meeting and these guys are fired up and they're excited and we say hey this is what we can do and this is what has to happen for us to win they want to try and make history that's what those 10 guys did that morning they went there and they made history and within a very short period of time it was over when i reflect back on it as mad as I was at the Lord for what the disappointment that I suffered in 99, so many times in your life, he's got a better plan. And what better plan could be to go back to Iowa City, have the only team that has ever had 10 All-Americans, and win our first national championship there. Twice the Lord. <laughs> he's got it all figured out. You have that feeling, that white light, that experience that is very hard. It's very, very hard to tell people what it's like. You know, as much as you have that downer down here at the lowest low, that highest high, you walk back in that tunnel and that you, you're there. You finally got there. Great, and it was really fun. It was crazy. It's just a great feeling. Yeah, all the hard work just finally to the end. So it was a little sad seeing it like all come to the end. But the way that it ended, I wouldn't want to end it any other way. They can't be on, on the course if there's a chance. Uh, because as soon as there's lightning, we gotta have a I'm a little bummed out because I'm kind of ready to get out of here earlier. But uh, I'm just ready for whatever other challenges like come ahead. The campers and staff wait patiently as the storm delays the final run. All campers must finish either a 12 or 15 mile run in order to graduate. This is all going south. Oh, good. We're way up here. Oh, we're about ready to declare. Yeah, so all you gotta do is get them out and get them started. I would say 6.45 should work. For some campers, finishing this run within a certain time is the difference between earning the I did it shirt go, go, and not. If we had a camp about being a great person, nobody would come, right? But what we can do is take these skills that we've identified, these J7, and we can use wrestling as the discipline to help these kids learn how to be great. My Olympic experience never meant much to me for almost 20 years because I didn't get a medal, right? But it took me 20 years to realize the most important thing about my Olympic experience was who I became in the process. Because when I was done wrestling, it didn't leave you. When these kids are done with camp, they have now gone from being boys to men. They've gone from people totally being responsible for them and doing everything for them. And for these 10, 14 or 28 days, this is about them. And those things will stay with them forever. It will help them be great in the sport of wrestling, but it won't leave them when they stop wrestling. It will become who they are.
Campers never know their point status at any time during camp. The only way they know if they've earned enough points is if a counselor hands them an I did it shirt. Radner and Trampe wait to see if they've earned it. Give Ben a medium of all three. Give Zach a medium of all three. It's a great feeling that we got it over with. Uh, I think I felt a little bit better last night after a hard practice, but this is just kind of like the last obstacle that we had to hop over. And I did pretty well on the run. I finished better than I was expecting. I beat all of our teammates except for Zach, obviously, because he finished first. It was just a great way to end the camp. God put me here for a reason. And one of those reasons is to help people get better. It's all about finding people that want to be good and then passing it along. There's people that impacted my life, greatly impacted my life. And I wouldn't be where I am without Ned Blass and Sue Blass, John and Margaret Robinson, okay, Myron Roderick, Dan Gable, right? And so, So the Bible says, to those, this, didn't, this ain't looking good. <laughs> but you don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> so the Bible says, to those who have received much, much is expected. I have an obligation to give back, right? It's really that simple. When you can go to camp and you can see that you can really help kids get to a different place, it's gratifying. Over the years, we've talked about, you know, maybe I should retire. He has shown up at, at Edinburgh in crutches with an IV bag hanging off his arm. I think he likes and enjoys hey saying that he has done it for 30 some years and is mentally tough and nothing has really stopped him from doing it and basically lived what he is trying to teach these young men and young women to do that a lot of what some people call obstacles and barriers that you can figure out a way past them. I wasn't put here just to have fun and be happy. I was here, put here for a purpose, right? I think that when I was in Vietnam, I really reflect back and think I was spared that so that I could do this, okay? That this was my purpose. I think it gives him almost two separate lives that he can look forward to. He can look forward to his end of August through May at Minnesota, and then he can look forward to his going on the road. I know that sounds crazy to go on the road all summer long doing camps. He's been doing it for probably half of his life, and I think it's just, it's a way of life for him. The Bible says, how much are you supposed to tithe, okay? 10% of what you make. Last summer, I added up how many days I have in an intensive camp. I have 2,482 days, okay? Six years, 10 months of my life. So if you look at if I'm 69 years old, it's about a 10th of my life. So it's my tithe, all right? My way to do it. It's gratifying to watch these kids, okay? Get some skills that make a difference in their life. So every summer I pack up and I enjoy it.
always wants it to be done. See? Everybody just wants to be done. You just want it to be over. See? See? That's the difference. See? 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 Well, that view, though, from up top, it's pretty good, and I think maybe you'll find that it's worth all that sacrifice and, well, whatever he had to do to get there. But... J. Rick Mann, the motivator, the myth, the legend. J. Rick Mann! Mountain. Oh, pick it for me, Paul, won't you? He's running. Population, not many.